Documentary filmmaker Shirley Horrocks has chronicled the life and works of numerous New Zealand artists such as filmmaker and artist Len Lai, photographer Marty Friedlander and playwright Roger Hall. Now she turns her camera on leading contemporary photographer Peter Perrier, who passed away in 2018 before the documentary Peter Perrier, The Art of Seeing premiered at the New Zealand International Film Festival in 2019. Shirley Horrocks joins me now. Oh, it's a real pleasure to, to talk to you. What a privilege to have had the time that you had with Peter and to have captured him talking about his life and work before he passed away. Absolutely. You know, these pro these projects start usually when I've seen, you know, a, a collection of work. It was the same with the Marty Freelander documentary. I was aware of Marty. I was aware of Peter. Their photographs have been around and I've, I've loved them. But it wasn't until I saw a large collection. And in, in Peter's case, um, it was a collector who showed me the collection he had on the wall, walls absolutely covered with Peter Perrier photographs. And I thought, wow, I really must I really must look into this. That's really interesting because I thought you must have been good friends. It's such a warm, intimate film. I f i you got the feeling he was terribly relaxed with you. I, I presume that you um must have known each other for for quite a while. No, in, in fact, in fact, we didn't. Um, I usually take quite a lot of time beforehand sort of getting to know somebody and hope like hell they're going to trust me because, you know, it's a big thing to put yourself in somebody's hands and I don't generally show people much of the documentary before they actually see it all that yes I do now show them the finished documentary but I, I didn't used to so anyway a lot of trust because I'm not going to change it because they say oh I don't like the way you've shown me that well oh, that's really interesting Shirley so would you normally not in the past have you sort of said to somebody I'm sorry you might be the subject of this documentary but you're going to have to turn up to a screening like everybody else to see it <laughs> <laughs> that how it works well people have oh, not asked actually and oh. I did um, I changed after the Kurnow documentary I made a documentary about Alan Kurnow the poet called Early Days Yet and he didn't see it until he was sitting next to me in the film festival but he loved um, it didn't he? but he did he did He. I looked sort of sideways at him I was absolutely petrified and wondering what he would what he would think, um, and he had tears running down his cheeks, and I thought, well, this is either good or bad. <laughs> um, so, but I realised, you know, the emotion, and then Marty Marty said, really, I would like to see it, and so I want people to see it in the best possible way. So we went to a small a, a small viewing. Um, um, cinema and um, they and she saw it there so yes I do I do show people before before I scream here yeah. what was Peter's response when you said to him I would love to make a film about you well I think I think he was happy about the idea but he's a very thoughtful person he wasn't going to say oh yes great idea so he invited me down up to New Plymouth to to um, have a chat over a coffee, and he had someone with him who who had worked with him in the past. And I thought, ah, yes, she's there to vet me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, apparently, apparently, I did pass and um, spent quite a lot of time afterwards driving around with Peter. Not on that day, on different on di at different times driving around with Peter and him chatting to me about what he saw, et cetera. Um, yeah. I've only met Peter once. I, I interviewed him once, but I get the sense from the film that the Peter you have captured on film is Peter, the everyday Peter. Would, did you feel that? Um, yes. I think, I think once he, we started and, he'd sort of given me his trust he was very frank and very open and I think it was 
a reasonably good um, portrait <laughs> of Peter. I mean, how can you ever capture a real person? Everybody is different. They're different with different people. But but um, after the screening, and it was very emotional because, of mm. course, Peter had um, was no longer with us. And um, a number of people said, oh, thank you. You've given Peter back to us again. What fascinated you as you got to know Peter and learned about his approach to photography and his work? What what insight did you get from um, getting to know him? What intrigued you about him? Well, his I mean his choices are somebody said I'm um, quite quite mysterious. Um, you look at yeah. you look at his you look at his photos. And you think, wow, you know, I can't quite put my finger on why it grabs me and and why it's um, why it's so good. And I remembered something that Alan Kerner had said at the very beginning, um, at the very end of the documentary about him. He sort of leaned forward, and I looked for the quote, so I'll, I'll read it to you. He said, "A poem that you could get in one." get in one and explain in one, well, that's it. Put the book down, you've had that one, been there, done that, but the best poems should not leave you with the, po with the been there, done that feeling. There's something there that you will never get. They will remain teasing and their essence, whatever their essence is, will elude one. And I thought that that, is exact, that sums up Peter's, Peter's images very often. That, you look at that, it. Yes, yes, I completely looks, agree. You you constantly find yourself returning to his work, don't you? That's right. And mm. and you look at it, and and um, you know that is a really good image. And and one of the critics said, or Peter said, then for instance, the negative space around around a subject is, is really important. Um, and that's why he he never. Allowed, allowed his work to be cropped. If somebody was yes. going, wanting to use his photography, they had to use the image as he made it. And of course, this was the wonderful thing about when an artist is able to talk about their own work. You've got the, the artist doing all the, all the talking. And I know that you don't like to use a narrator. What, why is that? Oh, I sometimes do. I sometimes use a narrator. In fact, I've used Jennifer Ward Leyland a lot. She's my voice of choice. <laughs> yes, of course, she did the sort of the Kiwi um, cultural um, films, um, uh, the cultural, um, was it Kiwi Airs and things that she did with you? Yeah, I can't actually remember if, if, if I used her. That's so long ago. Wow. Um, yes. Um, but she did um, the free theatre the free theatre one that I did about free theatre in Christchurch. I might be getting confused with Miranda Harcourt. Miranda might have done those ones with you. But look, I'm, yeah, she, I'm glad that I'm glad that you. Can, mm. I'm, glad, I'm glad that you can't quite remember your own <laughs> collaborations <laughs> too, Shirley. So, so tell me, why in this particular case did you not use a narrator? Oh, because like like with the Marty one, I wanted um, I, I I prefer people to tell their own stories. So rather than have a, a narrator sort of imposing what could be construed as my view on the, of course my view's there because I've, I've edited it. But but um, no, I prefer I prefer the feel of the artist telling their own story. What is it about artists? that intrigues you? Why do they make good subjects? Well, um, I just happen to to love art um, and I love the intensity, the intensity that people put into art. So artists are very intense. So are scientists, a lot of them. So I've quite enjoyed working with science, scientists as well. Absolutely dedicated to what they're doing and Peter was absolutely dedicated. I mean, he called his work as an artist a calling or a vocation, like he had no, he he couldn't do anything but do what he was doing, which 
you know, I really love it. Shirley, you've screened. Uh, you've had, I think, more films screen at the New Zealand International Film Festival than any other director. I think you're up to 10 films now have been part of the festival. Do you get an automatic entry now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that'd be, that'd be nice because we <laughs> usually go and see about 30-odd. <laughs> <laughs> it's the least they can do for you, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's have to suggest it. <laughs> uh, tell me, what does it mean to have your film, uh, to have a film premiere in the New Zealand International Film Festival? Well, I ac absolutely love the New Zealand International Film Festival. Been a devoted um, attendee since it began, and to me, it's the greatest. Um, it's a, it, it, I just am so happy to be accepted into the into the film festival and to go along and be there and hear what the audience is doing. Um, that's really important. I love to be at screenings because it's good when people laugh when you want them to laugh and they get it, you know. So that's that's very important to me because the the film festival gives gives you a lot of screenings. Like I think the Peter Perry went to um, ten or eleven different cities and towns in New Zealand, and um, I unfortunately couldn't go to all of them. Um, but yes, it's it's great. Shirley, what did it mean to you to receive the New Zealand Order of Merit for services to documentary filmmaking? Um, a bit a bit surprising, really. But um, it's filmmaking is a kind of um, solitary occupation, and you sort of you're just there do, doing your thing, and. Um, so it's kind of kind of surprising when you uh, suddenly realise, oh well, yes, I have got quite a large body of work, and it's really nice to be recognised. Absolutely. And what's on the horizon? You mentioned that you're you're working on a, a science project at the moment. Right. Well, it's um, something very different. There's a very interesting woman who has the big job of being the Prime Minister's Chief Science Advisor. And I got intrigued by the way, you know, what she has to do and, and, and what they do. So I decided to um, do something about her. And instead of, well, we will make a, I will make a, a long documentary at the end. But what, what I'm doing is like uh, putting it out on the internet in, in sections in different subjects. So we had one launched at Government House last December um, by Dame Patsy, um, and that was called Science and the Plastics Problem. So, um, and this the one we're doing now is uh, is about cannabis pre uh, just before the referendum, so that there's some information for people to think about. Fantastic. Shirley, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. And we're absolutely thrilled to be playing uh, the documentary, The Art of Seeing. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And I'm thrilled you're playing it. I feel confident that somewhere in here there's a photograph for me. From acclaimed director Shirley Horrocks. You're the person who did that photograph of the dead guy on the side of the road. The life and career of Peter Perrier. It does have a distinct sense of humour. A name synonymous with creating art from the everyday. He just has a way of looking that's like nobody else's. Peter Perrier, The Art of Seeing. Premieres February 27th on Rialto Documentary.